Welcome to another Generation Behind Hi-Fi video. Today I'll be doing a look inside video on the brand new Serwin Vega LA165 bookshelf speaker. This new LA series was just released a few months ago and is a very important milestone for the brand because this is the first time in 16 years that a new line of speakers has been developed with all three brands being under the same roof. If you haven't heard, Serwin Vega Mobile, which is under the umbrella of Diamond Audio, purchased Serwin Vega Pro and Serwin Vega Home from Gibson about three years ago. This means all three Serwin Vega brands have now been reunited and are now living under the same roof. A new line of speakers is a great way to celebrate this new unity, but are they any good? Let's find out. Before I get into the specifications, TS parameters of the drivers, and build quality, please keep in mind that these are insanely affordable speakers, and what I mean by that is that you can buy a pair of these babies for less than $270 per pair, and that's full MSRP without any discounts being applied. So if you're expecting perfect measurements and B&W 800 series like performance for peanuts, then you're simply being unreasonable. But if you're in the market for some insanely affordable speakers that sound pretty good while also having some charm, then the LA165 is a speaker you definitely want to have a listen to. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the woofer. The driver is held in by eight, yep, I said eight, three millimeter Allen screws, which hold the woofer to the front baffle. I can't think of another brand of speaker at this price point that uses this many screws to fasten the woofer to the front baffle. So far, I'm liking what I'm seeing. And there it is, the heart of the Serwin Vega LA165 bookshelf speaker. It's a six and a half inch driver with a stamped steel basket and has a pretty decent sized motor structure that utilizes a bucking magnet that is glued on top of the main magnet. Bucking magnets are quite the rarity today and Heiko, Polk, and Serwin Vega are the only three brands that I'm aware of that still use them. The woofer on the left is from my Serwin Vega LA165 bookshelf speakers. And the woofer on the right is from my Heiko Aurora 700 floor standing speakers. Do you see any similarities? Because I sure do. So what is a bucking magnet? A bucking magnet is another magnet that is placed on top of the main magnet and has opposing polarity. The opposing polarity cancels out the magnetic field generated by the main magnet. This design technique was commonly used in speakers back in the 80s and 90s so they could be placed next to a tube TV without interfering with it. I have read that bucking magnets can increase the sensitivity of a speaker slightly as well as lower the speaker's QTS, also known as total Q. Anyway, seeing a woofer design utilizing a bucking magnet is quite the rarity today. The driver in the LA165 is pretty good for this price point. The driver has a 1 inch voice coil and is utilizing a vented pole piece. A vented pole piece helps cool the voice coil indirectly as well as releasing the trapped air behind the dust cap during long strokes. Another nice design feature is that Serwin Vega is venting the voice coil underneath the spider, which will help keep the voice coil cool during those long and loud listening sessions. The driver utilizes a butyl rubber surround and the comb material appears to be made out of paper mixed with some type of a composite or glass fiber materials to enhance its strength and rigidity. Simply put, a very respectable driver for this price point. The woofer for my LA165 weighed 2 pounds and 5.2 ounces on my scale. For comparison, the mid-range woofer for my Heiko Aurora 700 weighed 2 pounds and 9.1 ounces and the woofer from my Polk Monitor XT20 weighed 3 pounds and 2.8 ounces. The woofer from the LA165 measured okay on my bench. The resonant frequency of this driver came in at 58 Hz. 
There is a small resonance around 750 Hz, which is pretty typical for a speaker of this size. Even the woofer from my Bowers & Wilkins 705 S2s had a similar resonance around this frequency range. This is probably caused by cone breakup or surround resonance. Now let's look at some other important variables like inductance and quality factor, also known as QTS. These variables will determine how well a speaker will sound and perform. The inductance from the LA165 woofer measured really well at 0.29 millihenries and is lower than the inductance that I measured from my Focal Aria 906, which came in at 0.32 millihenries. Not bad considering the Focals are $2,200 per pair. Quality factor, or QTS, determines how well a speaker is damped, and this variable will change depending on what type of enclosure the driver is installed in. Another thing that QTS tells us is how big of an enclosure a driver will need. Speakers with a high Q value of 0.6 or higher will require a large enclosure in order to maintain a good bass response. So I'm surprised that Serwin Vega is using such a high Q driver and such a small bass reflex enclosure. But whatever they are doing, it seems to be working because during my listening sessions, the bass extension is on par with my Kef Q350s, which is impressive. Here are a few more parameters that I measured from the LA165 woofer in case anyone is interested in them. I thought it would be cool to compare the driver from the Heiko Aurora 700 to my Surin Vega LA165 since they look so much alike and share a lot of the same technologies, but as you can see, they are quite different. The tweeter is held in by four 3mm Allen screws and is very easy to remove. The tweeter faceplate is a quarter of an inch thick and is made from plastic. I don't want to go into too much detail about how the tweeter sounds because I'll be saving that for my review video, but what I will say is that this tweeter is pretty nice and its smoothness and detail impressed me for this price point. The LA165 looks to have a one inch silk dome tweeter and it has a pretty beefy motor structure on it too. Silk dome tweeters have been around for a while and if engineered properly, they can produce a nice warm sound that is full of detail and smoothness. Honestly, I wasn't expecting a tweeter with such a big motor structure on it. Usually speakers in this price point have tweeters that look more like this. Most of the extreme budget speakers that I've done a teardown on have tweeters that typically look like this one. Some have sounded decent and others have sounded, well, pretty awful. In my opinion, the tweeter out of the LA165 is above average for this price point. Now let's find out how it measures. The tweeter measured pretty good for this price point. Driver resonance is taking place around 2.6 kHz. I have no idea if this resonance is audible. It may be entirely benign. But I will say this, I didn't hear anything that sounded off during my listening sessions. The resonant frequency of this tweeter is 1080 Hz and the DC resistance measured in at 7.37 ohms. First I'm going to look at the terminal cup to see if they're using any ferromagnetic parts. Oh that's great. So the binding posts are not magnetic. Neither are those. That's great to see. So the nuts that hold the uh, binding posts on are made from steel as well as the clips or the terminals that the speaker cables uh, plug into. These could be easily rectified. You can buy some brass nuts and replace them and also purchase new um, terminals here that the speaker wires connect into. But you know again not surprising this is a budget speaker so I'm not surprised to see uh, steel parts being used. Crossovers on budget speakers is usually where I find the most cost cutting being done. Second would probably be cabinet construction. Serwin Vega has designed a pretty nice crossover for the LA165, especially considering the price point that these speakers sell at. This is probably one of the better crossovers that I have seen at this price point, judging by the quality of the components on the board. I'm impressed that Serwin Vega is using polyester caps on the tweeter circuit versus your typical electrolytic caps. 
Electrolytic caps are typically what I see in the crossovers for budget bookshelf speakers with 6.5 inch drivers in them. Even the $300 Polk Monitor XT20 uses electrolytic caps for their tweeter circuit. Polycaps have much better ESR and dielectric absorption values than electrolytic caps, and in my opinion, they sound a heck of a lot better too. Typically, these types of parts being used on the crossover are reserved for speakers costing about $100 to $150 more than the LA165. To give another comparison, I recently reviewed a pair of $725 monitor audio bronze 100s, and the quality of the crossover components from them are pretty similar to what Sorwin Vega is using in their LA series. They are both using polyester film caps on the tweeter circuit, and both are using a mixture of iron core and air core inductors. In my opinion, the crossover from the LA165 is above average for this price point. Nice job, Sorwin Vega! One of my favorite design features about the new LA series of speakers is that they're not using a typical boring square box cabinet design. I don't know where Serwin Vega found the money to use a curved cabinet design for this new series, but it definitely gives the new LA series a more upscale look. Even the espresso colored vinyl finish is pretty nice. It might even fool some people into thinking that it's real wood veneer. So what do you get for your $270? For starters, the front baffle on the LA165 is 3 quarters of an inch thick. That is very surprising considering how affordable these speakers are. Guess what other brand and model of speaker that costs $2200 per pair that also utilizes a front baffle that is 3 quarters of an inch thick? That would be the Focal Aria 906. I haven't reviewed very many speakers in the super affordable price range, but the ones that I have reviewed usually had front baffles that are only a half of an inch thick. The rear cabinet wall is 5 eighths of an inch thick and I would assume the sides of the cabinet walls are too. Serwin Vega even included some pretty nice damping material to line the inside of the cabinet walls with. At this price point, I wasn't expecting much, if any, damping material to be included. But holy cow, it's there! For a comparison, encloses a picture of the inside cabinet from my Polk Monitor XT20. These speakers retail for $299 per pair. As you can see, there isn't much damping material inside this cabinet, and this is typically what you see. In my opinion, the cabinet construction and damping material is above average for this price point. Nice job, Sir and Vega. The rear port is about 2 inches wide and is 4.5 inches in length. The port is flared on the end where it exits the cabinet wall, but isn't flared on the inside. I don't think this is a problem because I couldn't hear any port chuffing during my loud listening sessions. A really cool design feature that is included with this cabinet is the ability to change out feet. My LA165 speaker came with rubber feet on the bottom, but you could swap these out with other feet if you choose. Here I'm swapping out the rubber feet with metal spikes that came with my B&W ASW608 accessory pack but any feet with a M6 by 1.0 thread pitch will work. Serwin Vega claims the frequency response is from 33Hz to 20,000Hz. In my opinion, getting down to 33Hz is a bit optimistic, judging by the port tuning and resonant frequency of the driver. Port tuning came in at 56.52Hz. Do you see how the second peak is higher than the first peak? That means the resonant frequency of the enclosure is lower than the resonant frequency of the driver. I'm sure 33Hz is attainable with these speakers, but at what dB is that? Surin Vega doesn't provide that information, but if I had to guess, it's probably pretty low. These speakers perform very well for their size in the base department, but at the end of the day, they are still a 6.5 inch driver. Now let's see how much this cabinet sings by performing the good old fashioned knock test on it. Considering that these speakers are only $270 per pair, that's not bad. I'll also leave some links in the description to some of the products that I use to help dampen speaker cabinets with. And that's my look inside video on Serwin Vega's brand new LA165 bookshelf speaker. In my opinion, 
The quality of the cabinet and the crossover components are well above average for this price point. Sur and Vega did a really nice job by creating a quality speaker at an affordable price. I'll also be looking at their brand new LA365 tower speaker and their LA110 subwoofer, so please keep an eye out for those videos in the coming months. Until then, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays!